Hi everybody, uh, this is my first update on the neck fusion. Um, home about two days from hospital. The neck fusion went really well. The doctor that operated did an excellent job and I couldn't believe after about three, four hours of waking up, I could actually move around, I could actually walk to the bathroom uh, by myself and everything. And I think I was shocked myself how much movement I would actually have. So it's been quite good. Uh, there is pain, but I have a big box of painkillers to take care of that. And at least the burden that I had for eight years will hopefully be gone soon enough. And we will know. It takes about eight weeks for the bone to fuse. So I can't do anything whatsoever. So um, Dermot is my slave for right now and taking care of everything and doing a really good job. <laughs> um, and about five months for the recovery, as they've told me. And... The surgeon that I picked was, he was really confident when he told me that he would have me back in five months. And before I left the hospital, he told me that again, that I'll have you back in five months. And I truly believe him. Um, I came home and I was watching the Olympics and there was this piece that came on that uh, Michael Johnson spoke about. And it really inspired me. And it really showed what athletes do go through injuries, peak performance, getting into the zone, feeling good and feeling bad and it showed both sides of the coin and I thought it was brilliant and I'd like to share it with you guys and see what you think yourselves. Uh, it's a, a tough thing to be an athlete, to be a cage fighter, to dedicate all your life to it and to go through the struggles and I think this piece explained a lot about how they go through it and how they stay strong and it's given me fire in my belly to go forward now and go through these five months and do the best. I want to thank everybody who sent messages, really kind, lovely messages. It was incredible and to feel that love, that's something that's going to push me forward as well. Uh, next time if you want to send something, maybe send some money as well, that would be really good. <laughs> Only joking. So all my Apple female followers, um, I'll see you again and I'll update you as soon as I can start exercising and fill you in on how we're going and enjoy this clip. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. To compete at a home Olympics should be an experience to enjoy, to treasure. But for just a handful of athletes, that honor has been accompanied by an indescribable burden. For they are the face of their games. This phenomenon is about time. A talent burning at its brightest, fueled by graft and dedication. The embers of expectation, stoked by our public's hopes and dreams, become a roaring inferno, fanned by the media consumed worldwide. Everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, you will see the face of the games. The first Olympian subjected to such intense, unique scrutiny was Carl Lewis in Los Angeles, 1984. Equaling Jesse Owens' four gold medals in the games was an achievement that catapulted him from track and field superstar to sporting great. And history is being made! In Atlanta, it was me. 200 and 400 world champion. Could I be the first man to win both at an Olympics? People predict. They assume. Of course he'll do it. But those seven other guys on the start line are not there to make up the numbers. The height means nothing now. No one else is going to run for you. Athletes talk about getting into the zone, tunnel vision. Your route to the finish line, crystal clear. Your surroundings are relevant. The crowd may scream and cheer. You hear nothing but the bang of the gun. In Sydney 12 years ago, Kathy Freeman had more than athletic expectancy weighing on her shoulders. She will represent Australia's past, present, and future. Lighting the flame in the opening ceremony was an ordeal in itself. It took guts to step away from those vital preparations just days before competition starts. The crowd roaring criminal! It required an appreciation of the bigger picture, of what hosting that Olympics meant for her nation. Go for Freeman! Oh, no, I just want to go home and have a cry for this little black crowd, to be honest. Being the face of the games doesn't guarantee a fairy tale ending. Four years ago in Beijing, Chinese hurdler, Olympic champion, and cultural icon Lu Zhang withdrew in the first heat of competition after aggravating an old injury 
He's almost in tears. Was he even fit to compete? You cannot underestimate the pressure that comes with one billion fans urging you to race. To race for them. So who is the face of London 2012? Step forward, Jessica Hennis. Hopes of home gold are higher than we ever imagined. It's a lot to take, the pressure cooker of expectation. Her talent is burning bright, fueled by hard graft and dedication. The embers of expectation, stoked by the British public's hopes and dreams, have become a roaring inferno, fanned by the media, consumed worldwide. This quiet girl from Sheffield has it all, except one thing, her dream. Her nation's dream. Home of the gold. Well, this is where it will.